Do you really believe that the future will populate our lives with smart robots, supercomputers, starships, and other amazing innovations? Come down to Earth from the clouds. The dark ages are just around the corner for all of us. One fine day, you wake up and you don't hear the habitual noise of cars outside. Airplanes will stop taking to the air. The front gates of companies will close forever. The internet will cease to exist. And all connections will be disconnected. All this due to our planet running out of oil. So, how much time is left? Are there any ways to help free the world from dependence on oil? so that human civilization won't be lost into the darkness of another Middle Ages. This natural, oily liquid makes possible not only driving cars, flying airplanes, and navigating sea ships. It feeds us as our farming industries depend on it. It gets us dressed, providing us with cheap and sensible synthetic clothes made of petroleum products. And it makes our lives easier by offering a wide range of plastics. Various oil fuel derivatives are used in drugs for allergies, headache, nervous stress, and infectious diseases. And of course, we need crude oil for most equipment and vehicles essential to move all these products around the world, with their cost price coming out at the price as good as gold. Since the black stuff consumed to produce only one car is twice its weight. And don't think that endless chattering on the phone or watching new videos from Riddle may occur without this liquid, as the production of smartphones, computers, and other gadgets are all oil-based. It takes 630 grams of crude oil to make a chip weighing one gram or 39.4 pounds of crude oil to make a chip weighing one ounce. The internet globally absorbs energy commensurate with 10% of electricity consumption of the United States. All this could soon be gone. As British Petroleum predicts, oil flow will dry up by the year 2040, unless we can beat the clock and develop full-fledged energy alternatives. The creation of a controlled thermonuclear deuterium-tritium fusion reaction seems the most alluring prospect. Humankind will get an inexhaustible source of energy, if we can. If it weren't for the main problem with deuterium-tritium reaction, producing a large amount of tritium radiation with a half-life of only 12.5 years. In contrast, substituting helium-3 and deuterium for tritium makes fusion reactions nuclear safe. The problem is that helium stocks on Earth are scant, measuring only a few kilograms. True, one could stock up on cosmic helium, with a view to meeting Earth's current annual energy requirements. We would need to mine the moon for about 100 tons of helium-3, for which three or four trips with a space shuttle seem quite enough. But at first, helium-3 has to be separated on the moon from other gases, mainly helium-4. Igniting this kind of reaction requires heating the plasma up to 1 billion degrees, with the plasma control solution to be found at the same time. Therefore, such options are currently considered as the basis for future thermonuclear reactors. No synthesis is required, however, for direct use of solar radiation. Industry leaders already produce solar panels with a performance index as close as 37.8%, utilizing them in cheaper and more efficient semiconductors instead of conventional silicon photodiodes. But even such innovations in solar panels don't make them cheap and efficient enough to replace oil. On top of that, this energy source has proven to be reliable in countries only with a lot of sunny days. On cloudy days, performance drops drastically. Unlike helium-3, another substance, hydrogen, is ample on Earth and can serve as a perfect motor fuel. Hydrogen emits a large amount of energy during combustion, with formation of steam alone and no environmentally polluting substances. Hydrogen can be drawn from methane, coal, biomass, 
ordinary garbage and, of course, water. Obtaining this substance from water is extremely simple. It splits into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis. It's true that production of hydrogen for refueling cars is only at the stage of development so far, so that it'll be a long time before it could be competitive with oil. Wind-powered generators are another way to draw an unlimited energy from natural sources. They don't pollute the environment, with only a slight impact on the local climate. A wind turbine, as a rule, takes little space, not exceeding 1% of the whole farm area. The rest of the land can be used for agricultural needs. However, the productivity of such farms is completely dependent on wind power. If its annual average speed is below 5 meters or 16.4 feet per second, then using generators with a horizontal axis of rotation would not be feasible. True, currently there are rotary generators with a vertical axis of rotation that operate to advantage even at wind speeds of only 1 meter or 3.28 feet per second. Despite this, wind-driven generators are too expensive to produce, install and maintain with a view to make them peer competitors of oil. In addition, there are wave and tidal power plants also allowing the use of elemental powers. For example, at the Vigor Concern in Portland, Oregon, they created the OE buoy energy platform for the company Ocean Energy. It's a huge buoy weighing 826 tons, with about 1.25 megawatts of energy generated by the platform through wave forces. This amount is sufficient to provide electricity to a settlement of 18,750 houses. Unfortunately, with such stations, we're literally forced to wait by the sea for weather with the near-the-coast placement of major equipment. So experts regard them rather as an effective supplement to other energy sources. It appears that oil, now addressing 33% of our energy needs, cannot, however, be entirely replaced at least not so far. Sooner or later, we'll come up with a way to get rid of this dependency. Perhaps the perfect future source of energy is currently on its way, although now the idea of it may look weird to us. Scientists from University of California, Berkeley, have developed a method for generating electricity using the genetically modified bacterial virus M13. They added four negatively charged molecules to one end of its protein chain, thus enhancing the difference between the positively and negatively charged ends of the protein molecule, which resulted in an increase of electrical voltage. The researchers used a stack of virus films as big as one square centimeter, about 0.16 square inches, for building a postage stamp size electrical generator and placed it between two gold-plated electrodes with electrical voltage of approximately two and a half volts, enough to ignite the digit one on a liquid crystal display. Scientists have also detected the first implications that quarks, subatomic particles, can merge with each other and emit energy tens of times greater than reactions in the interiors of stars. Collisions of tetraquarks should result in energy release of approximately 200 mega electron volts. This is about 10 times as much energy as thermonuclear reactions generate. However, to date, such reactions are of no practical use since the particles where they can occur don't last very long. Nevertheless, physicist Gerald Miller from the University of Washington in Seattle notes that the discovery suggests the possible existence of stable exotic matter composed of quarks. The annihilation is theoretically proven to take place where interaction occurs between antimatter and matter with a huge amount of energy from this reaction of fusion released into surrounding space. 
interaction of one kilogram of antimatter and one kilogram of matter produces energy of approximately 1.8 times 10 to the 17th joules, which is equivalent to the energy released during the explosion of 42.96 megatons of TNT. For comparison, the most powerful nuclear device ever exploded on the planet, the Tsar Bomba, weighing 26.5 tons, released energy equivalent to between 57 and 58.6 megatons. In light of advances in technology, the implementation of this method is unlikely before the end of the 21st century. Would you put annihilation as the best alternative to oil or consider another method more promising? Leave your comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And be sure to click on the bell to be among the first informed about new Riddle releases of the most interesting videos still to come.